Hello all, in this lecture video, I will demonstrate how to solve linear programming uh, problem using Excel Solver 2013 version. So here we have a case description on sensuous scent case. So based on this case, we can come up with uh, the model here. This data from here to here is given to us and based on the case description and this data we have we have to come up with the decision variables which are the quantities for each type of uh, body spray or cologne or perfume to produce and then we have to come up with our calculations that will govern the constraints and finally this cell will be the objective function cell here we want to maximize the profit so it's a maximization problem so i will set these values to any uh, random values here the model is already set you can see by going to data solver you will see all the details here the focus for this video will be more on interpreting the answer report so I will hit the solver here, solve this one, and it has found the optimal solution. I will select the answer here and say OK. So it will add this answer report to us. And here we can find out many different details. For example, uh, Excel solver found the optimal value. Uh, to this much compared to the last one and then uh, these are the variable cells here they are all integer so final value is an integer so that's one thing and then this cell here shows you the details about your uh, constraints so as you see here uh, this constraints where it says binding those are the binding constraints now, binding constraints means that they have a slack of zero. Binding means they are kind of limiting or restricting the feasible region for the optimal solution. In other words, whatever optimal solution we are getting here is basically governed by all these binding constraints and not by these non-binding constraints, which also means that if you change the right-hand side of these binding constraints, your uh, objective function value will change. But if you change the right hand side of non binding constraint, your right hand, your optimal solution will remain unchanged. Now let's do that. So right hand side of this binding constraint here, let's say this one, body spray. We have a right hand side as set to as 60,000. So if I increase or decrease this right hand side of the constraint why again this is right side of the constraint if you go to the solver here you will see this one here d22 to f22 should be greater, greater than or equal to d6 colon f6 so that means this is my right hand side d6 to f6 and that's all in the report it says if you if the constraint is binding and if you increase or decrease the right hand side of the constraint it will uh, accordingly change your objective function value but that that is not true for non-binding constraint here now here non-binding constraint you will have a slack of 16105 which means that you are producing a surplus here the required was only 25,000, but you are producing 41,105. So you are producing a surplus, which means that even if you uh, increase 25,000 right hand side by a certain amount, it will not change the objective function value. And that makes sense. Let's say if I make this one 30,000, still we are producing 41,000. So still our objective function value will remain the same. And this will continue until you reach that limit of 41105. Your duty function value will remain the same. 
but if you increase any further then you know you have to solve the problem again because then this constraint might be binding itself and um, on the other hand you can decrease it to zero it doesn't matter because you're producing any way 41,105 so it's not going to change the objective function value but here 60,000 and 12,000 these are all binding constraints so if you change this one your objective function value will change and you have to solve the problem again because right now you decrease it to 55,000 and this is the old value so you have to solve this one again so if I say 25,000 here and I solve this one click on the answer report here so now uh, we are 55,000 here and we are producing 55,001 here now sometimes you might question like why it's producing one extra and in the answer report it says those are binding constraint here actually it doesn't say that it's saying that it's not binding because we have one surplus here and this is not binding here and f22 to f6 this one somehow is not showing a surplus of six for some reason i guess the reason here can be traced down to if you go to solver here and go to the option here there is a constraint precision so we are satisfying our constraint to within certain limit so sometimes it might not get to the exact point uh, so so it's like within that precision that could be the best solution we get so that's that's there so that's a little introduction to binding and non-binding and you notice here actually the value went up from 443 that was the case here right 443 749 in our report number two to this one and that makes sense because when you decrease the the binding constraint the right hand side of the binding constraint in this case because we have greater than equal to so we are saying that this value has to be greater than equal to this value and if that's a situation and if you decrease the right hand side basically you will get a better profit uh, in this particular case these things changes from problem to problem so keep that in mind because in a way when you are decreasing this amount you are relaxing the constraints and you are expanding the feasible region and that's why you know you tend to get a better solution but if you increase the right hand side of this one you will be contacting the feasible region and that might lower the profit as such so so you can think of this way if you increase more than 60,000 here your manufacturing cost will go up at, at a higher rate than the profit but if you decrease this one then your manufacturing cost goes down at a higher rate compared to the profit that you're making so hence when you decrease it you get better profit but this will hold true only up to certain range beyond that range you have to solve the problem again to get the optimal solution excel solver here is not giving me sensitivity analysis but if you want to know more about it feel free to read uh, introduction to management science book and that will give you more details with this i will stop my lecture video here thank you for listening